Hi, my name is Matthew, and I'm an application engineer here at Hotgrid Systems. Today in this video, I wanted to go over an introduction into DesignX, a reverse engineering software by 3D Systems. But for this introduction, I'm going to use a demo block um, that's pretty basic, but it has a little bit of freeform modeling, a couple of features that we can use um, solid inserts for, just a general good uh, example for the tools within DesignX. So with that, we'll just jump right in. For starters, I have my demo block within the software, and the first thing I'm going to do whenever I have a mesh is the auto segment. Auto segment is going to break up the mesh into a bunch of regions, and these different regions are what's going to really help with using the different tools within inside Design X. When it comes to breaking up the regions, I like to have the sensitivity set not too high. Uh, I, I like the sensitivity set to about a medium amount, um, and this just gives a good even spread of all the features. With it finished, you can see that we can hover over certain areas, and it shows that they're listed as planes, circles, and cones. This just means that it identifies that each region is associated to a different shape on the mesh. With these different regions, we could do things such as interactive alignments, which allows us to reorientate the global origin in conjunction with the mesh. So here I am selecting different regions, um, specifically region planes, that allow me to orientate the X and Y and Z planes within the global origin. And after confirming it, our mesh is now centered at the right orientation. I can also use these regions to use the different tools such as sketching and so on. When a region is listed as a plane, it is treated just like a plane. So I can select right on top of it and start using the different sketch tools to sketch out the outline of my block. These sketches are fully editable, so I can use dimensions and adjust it even to the global origin and set my values. I can exit out of the sketch and then go into the model tab to use extrude. I can pull it manually or type in a value to get it something exact. Another thing I can use the regions for is inserting solid primitives. This is kind of an introduction into the wizards within Design X. Wizards are shortcuts to do series of different tools back to back. So for instance, the solid primitive will allow me to select onto a region and insert in a solid body to match that region. In this case, on the back, I'm going to use it for the cylinder. I can see a little preview of what my solid body will look like within the tool. And just by clicking OK, the object is automatically inserted with a full-on feature tree. This feature tree can be edited, or I can even switch it to a cutting so it deletes it from my main body. Go into the Accuracy Analyzer, I can see the deviation between my solid body and the mesh, and a color map appears, letting me know just how close it is. In situations like it being blue, it just means that my solid body is inside of the mesh, so I just have to adjust my sketch to account for that. Just a slight change, and now my mesh is accurate with the solid body. I can use the solid primitive insert with other regions, not just the cylinder. So for instance, this cone right here, and maybe even the sphere in the upper corner, I can insert in a solid body and then set it to cut, deleting it from my main CAD body. Another way I can interact with my mesh within DesignX is the Mesh Sketch tool. This allows me to select onto a plane and insert in a secondary cutting plane that wherever this intersects with the mesh, it will generate sketch line previews that it can use to insert in actual sketch lines. These sketch line previews are just indications of where that plane intersected with the mesh and they can be used for snapping points with the actual sketching tools. That cutting plane's sketch lines are projected onto the plane that I selected originally. I can just start sketching over them right away. Similarly, once I finish the sketch, I can exit out and use the extrude tool to cut it away. Using the mesh sketch again, I'm going to get an outline of all the holes at the very top and just start inserting quick circles to be able to just snap around. I could then also use different tools such as the circular pattern and be able to pattern in the mini circles around the bigger one. And once everything is said and done, I can use a final extrude to bring it down. I'm just going to quickly go through and just start inserting in the remainder circles and sketch lines that are needed to complete the rest of the cuts in this CAD body. With all the easy circle cuts out of the way, I'm going to move on to these side circle cuts. Something like this, I can actually use a different wizard to create these cuts quickly. Instead of having to insert in two cylinders, I could use something like the revolve wizard. 
the Revolve Wizard lets me select on a series of regions inside of the mesh. And with that, it's going to create sketch lines to try and fit as best as it can to all of those regions. As you see, I can select on multiple parts of this, and clicking OK will show me a preview of what the solid body will look like. This looks pretty good. I could still go in and edit it if I want. Most of the time when using this tool, it's going to also identify where the fillets will be and add them in into the sketch. If you don't like that, you can always go back and edit the sketch as well. So we now have a lot of our prismatic cuts out of the way, but what about these different freeform shapes? So on the right side of our block, as you can see, we have this giant face with a freeform bump on it. So with a face like this, instead of being able to model that with a series of spline lines, it might be easier to actually use a different inserting tool. I'm going to select in all these regions on this face and merge them together into a single region. With the single region, I'm going to use the Mesh Fit tool. Mesh Fit is going to create a surface that matches as best as it can to an average of all of the triangles that are on a region. Clicking on the single region, I can click the next arrow to see a preview of what my surface will be. This preview will have a series of control points. I can increase these control points, so that way I can increase the accuracy. I can even manipulate the control points too. Clicking OK and confirming this will insert in a mesh fit feature. This surface is highly accurate to the mesh itself. Unfortunately though, it is not created with a series of splines, so we cannot edit it individually, but we can edit the feature if we want to manipulate the control points. With this surface, I'm able to now go in and maybe even extrude out my body a little bit more so it intersects with that surface completely and use something like the Replace Face tool. I can select on a face that I want to replace with a different surface. It doesn't matter if it is that freeform surface, as long as they intersect with one another, they will be able to be replaced. This is really handy for hybrid modeling, being able to replace the prismatic surfaces with freeform shapes so that way we can get a better fit to our exact mesh. I'm going to use a similar method, a mesh fit, to cut away this freeform shape at the very front of the block. First, I have to expose just that single area, so that way it's easier to cut away with the surface that I insert. I'm going to then have to group the regions together, and maybe even add my own region using the insert tool, just so that way I can get a nice area to select on for the mesh fit. I want to make sure my surface doesn't have any corners folding into the solid body. This will cause the cut command, which I'm going to use to trim away from the solid body with the surface, to not work properly. With my surface inserted in and probably exposed outside of my solid body, I'm going to use in the model tab the cut tool and select on my surface as the tooling body and my target body as the solid. I could then see the solid bodies that would remain. It looks like there's only two, which is what I would want. I'm going to select the main big one, so that way it gets rid of that tiny little area above the surface, leaving just that freeform shape that's highly accurate. And with that, we now have all those freeform surfaces done, and we just have one little area at the bottom to complete. I'm going to use that amazing mesh sketch tool, so that way I can just select on that bottom face and just insert in a quick plane just to get an outline of all the features at the bottom. I could go in and individually select each of these purple lines using the auto sketch tool and insert them in one by one, but I actually want to keep almost all of these, so I'm going to use something called Make All Curves, which is just going to convert all those reference purple lines into a sketch line feature. With this, I can just delete away the sections I don't need, leaving the outlines of the areas that I do want to extrude into my CAD body, so I can cut it away. We just have one more feature remaining, a cylinder that goes through all the way through the part. As you can see, we actually do have a hole fill, so our region is broken up into two different areas. If I try to insert in a solid primitive, it's actually inserted in two cylinders. But I want to make sure that this cylinder is an average of between both of those regions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on both of those regions and merge them together, so that way my solid primitive is actually referencing an average of both of those regions and not just them individually. And with that, we have our CAD block completely finished and at the point where we can now transfer into SOLIDWORKS. Geometric Design X has a unique tool called Live Transfer. This tool allows you to transfer the feature tree within Design X into a different modeling software. In my case, I'm going to bring it into SOLIDWORKS, being able to select what is the feature I wanted to start with, in this case the first one, the version of SOLIDWORKS, and just being able to just jump right in. Clicking OK is going to open up SOLIDWORKS. And after a little delay, it's going to create a new part and just start automatically inserting in features. This is all happening without me controlling the mouse. Each feature is being built in the order that was done inside of DesignX and even inserting in those mesh fit surfaces automatically. 
When everything is done, we'll have a full on feature tree. I can edit them later on if I want. I can even add in extra features too. In this case, I added in a few fillets just to round out everything. That's a complete workflow of modeling within DesignX. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos similar to this, as well as different videos on different products that we offer at Hawkridge. Thank you.